What is going on everybody? Uh, this video is going to be a quick walkthrough of how to get going with VirtualBox and VMs. Uh, so why would you want to use virtual machines? Uh, so sometimes you just want to try out some new software or maybe you think the software might not be completely trustworthy. Uh, well, VMs are a great way for you to be able to isolate risky software and just kind of throw away uh, software that you wanted to try out and uh, you want to make sure it's completely uninstalled, doesn't leave any files that uh, maybe over time if you do that with uh, multiple software packages might just cause bloat in your system. Uh, so for years I used VMware. Uh, both VMware and VirtualBox have free versions. Uh, but I like VirtualBox because you can uh, take snapshots, which the free version of VMware doesn't have. And over the past year or two, I have been having some network issues with uh, VMware uh, that are just kind of annoying. So with that being said, let's jump right in. Uh, we can just go out here to any web browser and do uh, VirtualBox download. Uh, if you're on Windows, the process will uh, be pretty much the same. Oh, did not want to start that. Uh, it's just going to be a .exe rather than a .deb file. Uh, I actually already downloaded that, uh, so we can go ahead and open up a terminal. Uh, you could also navigate to your downloads folder, uh, double click uh, on the .deb file, and it should give you a button to just install. Uh, in my case, I am on Linux Mint, uh, so I went ahead and did uh, Ubuntu uh, because Mint is a distribution that's built off of Ubuntu. Uh, if you're on Debian or Fedora, uh, choose the appropriate uh, one there. But the process should be uh, fairly similar, uh, if not the same. So here we are going to need to sudo uh, dpkg-i for install and then uh, just the name of the deb file. And this might scream at me because I have already downloaded it. And that should just take a few moments to run. And once you're done, it probably still will not show up in the start menu. Uh, but if you just do a reboot, it should then show up there. Uh, now, spoiler, it's not going to run here. Uh, why? Because I am actually in a VM currently. Uh, so for virtualization to work, uh, you're going to uh, need to be on a uh, OS that's running on the hardware because virtualization uh, is run through the BIOS uh, and the CPU and it does not like to nest virtualization. Uh, you'll probably run into that if you try to run something like Docker desktop for Windows in a VM. I know I've encountered that. Um, but that being said, let's go ahead and switch back to um, my main host here and you can see I was on Linux Mint the VM there uh, so this is what you should see when you start VirtualBox minus uh, my existing VMs here and to get going uh, you'll just want to download an ISO uh, that could be Windows uh, any flavor of Linux you'd like and then uh, just go to create virtual machine. I uh, can call this whatever you'd like. I'm just going to call this delete this uh, because I will delete this after the video. And let's see here. Uh, want to actually go to one of my uh, secondary drives. And I'll put this um, on a secondary NVMe that I have. Uh, 
Uh, for the ISO, I know I recently downloaded uh, Linux Mint. That was seven days ago, so that should still be relatively fresh. Notice it was smart enough to say, oh, this ISO looks like Ubuntu of type Linux. And you can go ahead and skip the um, unattended installation. That would just ask us for a username or password that we don't really need. Okay, here you're going to set the CPU cores and the amount of memory. Uh, depending on what your system has, uh, you know, you're going to want to set that accordingly. And also look at the uh, system requirements for the operating system you are uh, going to run. And you can, again, increase or lower this uh, however you'd like. I'll go ahead and leave this at uh, 25 gigs because I know Linux Mint needs around 16. And then that would just give us extra space for any kind of additional software we'd like to install. So once that starts up, uh, we're just going to start Linux Mint. And that should just take a moment. Get rid of these pop-ups over here. And then we just need to install Linux Mint. And don't worry, we'll take care of the small box here in just a little bit. You will not need to uh, run your VM in this small box the whole time. Uh, so I just chose English as the language, and I want English US as my keyboard layout. I'm going to go ahead and not install the multimedia codex. Again, depending on what you're doing, what you're using it for, uh, you might want those. Uh, if you're doing straight programming, things like that, probably won't need it, and that'll just make our installation go faster. Um, erase disk. Again, this is the virtual disk, uh, not the disk on your physical PC, so uh, don't worry about losing that data. I'm closest to Chicago, so I will go ahead and choose that location. Uh, I will put my name as Gary. I'll leave that as the default. Usually I like to choose something, I don't know, with a little bit more character. Sometimes I, I call it like HP printer or something like that. Actually, we could do that. Just as an aside, I give myself a giggle. I think I keep pretty good security on my network, but I don't know, if someone was that skilled, it would probably take them only a, a few Nmap scans to realize that it's a PC, but eh, maybe they'd take it easy on me because I gave them a chuckle. While that's installing, if we go back here, if you did give it too little hard drive space, or if it's slacking uh, in RAM and things like that. Um, when this was shut down, if it was shut down, uh, you could adjust the memory uh, processor. Uh, but because it's running, it, it's just not letting us adjust those now. Uh, if you did not have enough file space, you would just want to go to Virtual Media Manager you see we have delete this and here you would just slide apply start it back up again and then uh, do the installation from there all right getting close here
and that might take a few minutes so let me cut it off here and I will come back as soon as this is finished installing okay that wasn't too bad just a few minutes and we will restart now and press enter that should fire right back up well I guess depending on how much RAM you gave it uh, but Linux is great like that uh, usually a little bit uh, quicker than other unnamed operating systems so uncheck this box unless you want to see it every time you log in until the end of time and we are going to uh, choose a disk file actually I wanted to insert guest edition CD image my apologies and probably uh, this is going to be uh, the password we set up for Linux Mint and that should just take another moment or two to run And while that's running, uh, I will show you a few more uh, useful options. And let's see, do I need to, ah, awesome, I don't need to reboot. So notice, just give it a wiggle. Uh, it's not too annoying. I haven't figured out a way to fix that yet. Uh, but you do have full screen and notice we have updates uh, even though the ISO that we used was just a few days old um, but we'll shut down for the moment and if I go to here and snapshots uh, current state again depending on um, what you're going to be using this for um, you know you can give it a name and then say for whatever reason uh, the updates are bad um, I've never really run into that with uh, Linux but uh, also, if you install additional software just to try it out, uh, you can then just go back here, restore. It's going to ask if you want to create a snapshot of what you have uh, now after installing uh, basically wherever the machine is at right now. Uh, and you can just uncheck that if you don't want to save those changes and do restore. Um, but for now that's fine uh, one thing that you may want to do and it does need to be turned off for this if you go to uh, advanced uh, shared clipboard host to guest guest to host uh, host being your home PC so this option would let us uh, copy and paste to the guest to the VM uh, this would let us just copy from the VM to the host this lets us do it both ways uh, same with drag and drop uh, if you're doing this because you don't trust certain software uh, you'll probably want to leave both of those disabled uh, just because that does create a route uh, from the VM to your host uh, and for security purposes, uh, that is not good. Okay, so we can start it. Close those. And 
I typed password wrong. Uh, that's nice, it went to full screen. I don't know if it's ever really done that uh, without me having to wiggle it. Uh, but, let's see. One other thing I would like to show. This probably doesn't even have Chrome. So what I like to do is I like to download and install Chrome, uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, maybe the G Cloud SDK, uh, and then just kind of take a snapshot uh, before I start experimenting. Um, if uh, you wanted to do uh, Windows evaluation, You could download that ISO file and then run Windows as a VM. Uh, if you uh, have a product key, you could also use that product key to activate um, an actual full version of Windows. And I guess that would be a good tip, something I ran into. Uh, because when they manufacture PCs now that ship with Windows, they actually embed the key uh, or the product key for Windows into the, the motherboard uh, so that if for whatever reason you need to reinstall Windows, it can look at that and use that product key and knows you're legit. Um, and I ran into this not too long ago where I had installed completely over Windows, uh, but I said, hey, I think that product key from seven years ago is still good. Uh, and OEM, I think that's original equipment manufacturer. You would just run this command which we are in a VM, so it won't give us any output. Oh, and that is interesting. Sys firmware does not exist on the VM. Uh, but I did it not too long ago on a physical laptop. I won't be demoing that uh, because I don't want my product key out there. Uh, but, uh, Actually, let's see what would be a good quick install. Let's install Chrome. Debian Ubuntu, accept and install. That should just take a moment. And of course, you could do this with uh, sudo uh, dpkg-i and then the name of the dev package. Again, it's probably going to make me uh, restart before that shows up in the start menu. But let me see if a update will do that. Sometimes, for whatever reason, that just works. No. So let me do a quick restart. And 
while that's coming up. I will say, um, as I said, I was on VMware for a very long time. Uh, I don't remember why, but probably five years ago, I was having all kinds of trouble with uh, VirtualBox. Uh, so I switched to uh, VM VMware, uh, and it wasn't until I took a course from TCM Academy here, um, and I was looking at malware analysis, and let's see, I'm looking to give credit here. Let's see. Oh, I wish it gave the name. Uh, but much credit due to uh, the author of uh, this course. Uh, a lot of the setup I just showed here, I learned uh, from this course. He goes into much more detail on how to isolate your um, your virtual box environment, uh, make it safe for running malware, uh, detonating malware. Uh, so if you are interested in things like that, I would highly recommend this course. Uh, as always, give credit where credit is due. Uh, and one last thing we will show we are running Google Chrome, but if we go ahead and come back here to our virtual machines, and I'm going to restore, I will not create a snapshot, and go ahead and start again. Chrome. There is no Chrome because we installed it after the snapshot that we reverted to. Uh, so that is all for this video. Hopefully you find this of utility. Again, uh, if you want to try out software that's not necessarily trustworthy or uh, you want to try out just new software that you'll never use again and don't want it hanging out on your host operating system. Uh, VMs are a great tool to have at your disposal. Um, also kind of goes into the cloud a bit, just in spirit, where if I make a VM in the cloud, uh, there are ways to kind of uh, checkpoint safe states and just kind of getting used to that uh, capability I think is very important um, but that's all for this video and I will see you in the next one